Hello and welcome back to another class guide. My name is Heiken and today we're revisiting War Tales classes. These are deep dive guides. I am doing regular guides with precise, on point, no BS, no repetition mode where we get straight to the point. I'm revisiting each of the classes mainly because a lot has changed. Helmets have come out since I released the original class guides. The Pugilist has been uh, released and the fourth class skill has been released meaning 7th uh, and 5th levels got new class skills. And I got a couple of questions from the original guide. So this is not a replacement of the original guide. This is seemingly just an add-on uh, with alternative builds. Uh, the current guide will go through two additional builds. Sometimes they are variations of the original build. Sometimes they are actually new builds. And we're going to see how they fare. On top of that, I want to add some gameplay footage, so stay tuned to see how the classes are actually playing out. Let's jump right into it. Today we're going to take a look at the Archer. The Archer is going to come, with, as always, with two different builds, and uh, those are going to be the Hunter first, and then I'm going to look into the Infantry Man build. Uh, I left out Beastmaster mainly because I'm not the biggest fan of animals. Uh, they are increasing the enemy pack sizes as well, and are typically not worth it, so they are a net negative and I would avoid them. But some people love them, so Beastmasters uh, are fine. If you are looking for Beastmaster build, you might just want to uh, do the Hunter build with a... I'll, I'll give you a couple of pointers how the Beastmaster build would be uh, built around that. It's basically the Hunter build with a few modifications. And Marksman is typically a bit too expensive for my taste, so it doesn't really justify the damage. Um, as always, we're starting with attributes into equipment, into the actual skills, and then some gameplay footage. Great, let's go with the attributes. So the Archer, just like any DPS build, uh, will want to focus first on movement and willpower and then the rest on critical hit. Let's start with willpower. You want to go with 15 willpower in order to be able to survive the first deadly attack. Then secondly, you want to go into movement. Uh, 20 or 22 is kind of the sweet spot where you want to be. Since you're wearing light armor, maybe 20 will be just enough because your armor is going to give you extra movement. However, your armor layers will reduce movement. That's why you want to be that high. Rest goes into critical uh, strike. And I am saying that in most of the builds, but critical hit, uh, you don't need all of the traits in order to get it incredibly high. I'm already over capped, far over capped actually. Um, you are going to get a lot of mileage out of your base value. If you then uh, choose a profession, in this case Thief, that's going to give extra crit, great. If you choose a trait like Bloodthirsty, great as well. But listen, you can acquire traits like Tormentor uh, over the uh, playthrough, uh, which is 5% uh, crit itself. You can easily uh, get the path bonus for Prime and Chaos. Once you reach level 12, you get 5% critical hit chance per wanted level. That um, uh, gets you up to 25% extra crit. Your equipment can get up to 55% of uh, crit, mostly coming from the armor layers, 45 like I'm using. And then if you use sharpen oil, which I'm not using on, uh, on this one, you get another 10%. And if that is not enough, you do have the option to use stuffed cabbage for 15% extra critical hit or beer infused wolf ribs for 20% extra critical damage. So plenty of options to get to that 100% crit around the level 8, 9, 10, uh, 11 mark where things are becoming a little bit more interesting and even before that all of the things that I just mentioned to you are very viable spots of getting your crit further up. So that's how you do it. Now let's take a look at the equipment. As for the equipment I want to make sure that we're not going to use strong equipment so we're just using self-crafted or easy to find equipment um, so that the um, game is not being carried by the equipment but rather by the actual build. Uh, we're going to use the self-crafted light armor, self-crafted um, uh, light helmet and in this case I'm using a war bow uh, but 
listen, uh, the, uh, this war bow can be easily replaced by a self-crafted bow, not, no, no problem whatsoever. Uh, the war bow just has a nice ability that I think will be quite helpful for us. Um, it is by no means a super strong or overpowered weapon. We're having a self-crafted uh, belt accessory uh, to round it up so you can get that equipment easily. Uh, all self-crafted uh, with the exception of the bow which you can replace with a self-crafted bow. As for the hood, we're going to use uh, the Assassin Stric Strychnine um, imprint or stamp, which allows us to deal 25% extra damage against poisoned units. And there will be plenty of poisoned units, so that's great. And uh, a good 25% uh, damage grab. For the runes, we're using Mir's Brooch, uh, which is not very surprising. Gives a straight up uh, 15 critical hit at the expense of one movement. Since the armor itself uh, provides us two movement, the net movement is minus one um, and at 45 uh, critical hits. So that's where most of the critical hit is coming from. The war bow itself is a nice weapon because it has the volley of arrows uh, options. As soon as we're dealing a critical hit, we attack a second time. Well, it's just a nice little add on to deal a bit more damage on top of it. The second attack will then um, benefit from the assassin's strychnine because the unit uh, regularly is poisoned and uh, therefore will then take 25% more on the second attack. Um, as for the oils, I had a perforating um, oil, which ignores straight up 50% of the guard. Great um, for uh, that uh, heavier target that you might want to attack with the build. And then infectious oil, every time a skill deals damage, it has a 50% chance to apply a status effect uh, equaling to 50% of the damage. I am using the infectious oil concentrate so that we're applying uh, that 100% of the time, which means there is going to be a delayed uh, buffer. This build here can really go for heavier targets, attack them twice, then attack another target and have that huge, huge damage delay uh, back there. You could also, in order to um, pull off the assassin's uh, strychnine more reliable and not rely on party members to um, to uh, poison the units you can also use a poisoning oil here just as uh, just as well so both of them work fantastically with that build together let's go into the skills and take a look uh, what we do have in store I will go through this with the Hunter build and always mention the Beastmaster because a lot of it is an overlap. We're starting with Valorous support. We really want that uh, free Valor whenever we can. Uh, this character is a Valor spender, uh, but this will ease in the burden a little bit more if we um, end up standing next to someone at the end of the day. We're going to go into Hunter, um, which is the absolute staple. Deals a lot of damage and forces the target back. Also creates slowdown so the target won't be able to reach us next turn. For Beastmaster, respectively skill Beastmaster. Then we're going into reinforced arrows. Every time the unit lands a critical hit, it applies bleeding, which is always, and critical damage is increased by 35%. Fantastic, absolutely massive damage um, increase, uh, which is why I would almost always uh, skill that. Uh, only exception is if you go Beastmaster, you want uh, the Beast Mastery and control the animals in battle. Um, and uh, then at level 12, you want to take reinforced arrows so that is the build pass for beastmaster the rest is going to be um, equal reinforced arrows um, for the hunter build then we're going into easy prey uh, isolated targets um, have a damage increase of 30 percent uh, as long as they are not standing next to another ally that is fantastic i like it it deals a lot of damage even for the Beastmaster build, I would consider doing that. There are options with Animal Affinity uh, where you can get more crit chance from uh, the Wolf uh, pack, blah, 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 blah. Not as good as uh, Easy Prey. If you are crit chance uh, maximized, I would always go for Easy Prey. We're going into Lone Wolf, uh, which this build um, uh, plays a little bit like you're standing alone are taking your shots and then you're moving next to a target uh, to regain the Valor. You could, if you don't want to do that, also go into Valorous Victory and simply uh, 
yeah, kill enemies and gain the Veiler back that way. As the level 12 option, we're going to use uh, Suppressive Fire because um, this is just too good of a skill to not use it. Apply slowdown to everyone in an area, applies damage to everyone in an area, will crit nicely and with our infectious oil, it will also put extra damage on top of uh, that and everybody in the, un uh, in the area will bleed. So not only are you going to have bleeding damage, you also have delayed damage to everybody and it's just a massive, massive area. So that is where the build begins to shine. Uh, and will take out a lot of enemies. So, um, Valorous support into Hunter, into uh, the Reinforced Arrows, Easy Prey, Lone Wolf, and Suppressive Fire. For the Beastmaster, it will be Valorous support into Beastmaster, into Controlling uh, the Beasts, into Easy Prey, into Lone Wolf, and then into Class Specialization, and then Reinforced Arrows. So that's really the build in a nutshell. Let's take a look at how this plays out. All right, time for the archer to shine. So uh, we are in a bit of a pickle uh, of a situation. We're fighting against level 14 enemies, quite a lot of guard. As you can see, almost a thousand hit points. They are out leveling us. And most of them do have really good gear, three star gear here and there. So uh, really strong enemies. Uh, let's see what our archer is going to do with regards to that. So we want to get that lone wolf buff. Uh, we're not uh, really far enough away from everyone else. So we're getting into a lone wolf position and then uh, we're going to start dishing out a lot of damage. This here is the AOE a damage that I talked about. Now let's take a look, right? So they are slowed down. They have taken um, the infectious uh, damage, so that will be 84 points of damage, and they are on top of it uh, poisoned, and they are bleeding, uh, which means uh, this guy is likely or more likely than not going to be dead. Um, but that's not all. Let's take a look at the single uh, damage. This foot soldier here takes two shots to the face, immediately dropping him down to 200 uh, uh, to uh, 174 points of damage with the infectious oil we're looking at a uh, stable 260 points of damage on top of that but that's again not all there is uh, we could um, one shot this phalanx soldier over here uh, making it even better for us so as you can see we have now killed this guy this guy he is heavily injured this guy is slowed down cannot reach us and uh, with the infectious oil on top of it he will uh, be um, bleeding out not immediately but he'll be at half hit points we've killed this guy and we've killed uh, the uh, spearman so that's one two three four five dead one dis uh, and one disabled all we need to do is walk into the mud so that they can't reach us um, I'm not too fast about that one valor that we're not getting. So that's a great example of how the archer really can control the battlefield and dish out tremendous amounts of damage. Good, let's take another look at an archer. We do have a battle on two fronts. We're going to this time use the slowdown on one side just so that these guys are not going to uh, reach us. And then we're going to see just how absolutely strong uh, the actual attack can be. I'm going to use a little trick here uh, of lining two up in a row and using the war bow's volley of arrows and by doing so we're hitting the first one uh, twice. I could have been even a split but essentially we can kill Enem uh, enemies uh, without losing the volley of arrows is um, how you can utilize uh, these. Afterwards, we're just going to snipe one uh, down, get the DPS out of the fight and end the turn. That brings us to the Archer yet again. And we're this time looking at the second build, the Infantryman, which is an area of attack based build. Um, which is really focusing on crowd control a lot. So really quickly to the attributes, very similar to the first build, we want to go for 15 willpower and up, we want to go for 22 movement and the rest 
goes into critical hit. That is just like uh, we've seen it beforehand, nothing particularly uh, out of the ordinary there. We do have the same uh, equipment we're using uh, this time. Um, yet again, SS and Strike 9, because oftentimes enemies are poisoned. If that's the case, that's 25% extra damage. Unfortunately, the only attack of opportunity based um, uh, option for the helmet is one that gives attacks of opportunity to beasts and we don't need that. We're going to use Mir's Brooch uh, three times, uh, which uh, has skyrocketed our critical hit. And we're going to have both uh, perforating oil for 50% guard ignoring and infectious oil for 50% extra damage as a status effect. So that'll be specifically interesting because this build deals a lot of its damage outside of its own turn, which means uh, the infectious oil kind of immediately after the enemy's turn triggers, which makes it very, very good. Let's take a look at the skills. As for the skills, we're again going with Valorous Support because oftentimes we're going to position ourselves right behind the tank. We're then going for infantry men, um, and that allows us to get Barrage. Costly because it takes uh, two Valor, but uh, we can perform up to four attacks of opportunity in that particular area. Really, really strong, and I fully, fully appreciate uh, how good it is in larger battles. Enemies will take a lot of damage with that, and if your bow does have uh, crit um, abilities uh, that apply status effects, then that will also apply. In our case, it is uh, simply that we're going to put some infection on them and we'll um, harvest the extra damage. We're going to uh, take uh, critical hits during uh, them approaching us. So we want to not only increase the critical damage by 35%, but also make them bleeding. So keep in mind, uh, bleeding will be put on top of it. Infectious oil uh, plus bleeding already means that a lot of damage is delayed. So right after their um, turn, they will take both of that and potentially even die from it. We're going to use easy prey again. Um, as whenever they are moving towards you, it's very likely that no adjacent unit is next to them. We're going to use anticipation and not lone wolf because we're oftentimes standing together with others. And that really um, is just an option to not get engaged uh, by someone else. And then we're finishing with suppressing fire. So really how that build is supposed to play out is we're going to shoot once with our bow on a long uh, range then maybe suppress fire and then set up a zone. And we're going to see all of the enemies that are going to come in. Let's see how well that works in practice. All right, we join yet another fight and I want to just uh, showcase how good the archer and this build really is. We find ourselves flanked uh, by two sides um, in a relatively open field. Uh, so these guys can very much access us here. Luckily, this fence will provide us um, some more defense against whatever is coming up from here, but our tank will face some consequences. So really, it's the best possible timing for the archer. For starters, we're going to uh, slow that entire group down. Uh, they are now slowing, bleeded and, uh, bleeding and have infectious all. Just let's take a look at their strongest, most sturdy member over here. Took about uh, one third of uh, the armor as damage, cannot move uh, very far anymore. Will lose 25% of his health and on top of it 66 uh, extra health. So he's gone, uh, more than 50% of his health will be gone after this turn and the more uh, weaker uh, mm, uh, weaker equipped enemies, the more fragile ones um, are almost entirely dead just from that one attack. We're then uh, going to set up a nice camp over here um, in the back line and uh, to make matters worse for them, let's begin to just hit the first guy, kill him right away with our bow and then we're going to uh, set up uh, our uh, zone right here. 
And this is going to be one of those zones uh, where the enemy is going to wish that they have never left their bed this morning. Just take a look at that. Moves in. Deals. All of that damage just came uh, from an attack of opportunity. Let that sink in for a second. So this guy came in. 60% uh, guard. Um, almost 1200 uh, hit points together effectively that would be 3000 effective hit points we're going to uh, we have uh, taken out two-thirds of the guard uh, this guy is having an infectious oil next uh, turn he will take 233 points of uh, damage and he is continuously bleeding he's already lost uh, that much amount of hit points and that will just continue uh, to propel on and on. So he's effectively dead. He just doesn't know it yet. So that's the first attack. Let's see if I can capture a couple more just for shits and giggles. All right, attack number two uh, for the archer. And we've put up a little uh, spear zone. I should have maybe uh, recorded that as well. And attack number three for the archer. And you can uh, see uh, he normally would have four attacks. The one that I haven't recorded was an interaction with a spearman where he basically pushed back an enemy that counts as movement, again, triggering uh, the attacks of opportunity. So the archer in this uh, fight has not only disabled that one front, but he has also attacked four times for a whooping uh, so four times with a zone for whooping um, around 2,000 points of damage and then two times with his bow for another around 1,000 points of damage. Very strong build if you position well. All right, we're done with the build guide and deep dive uh, to the specific class. I hope you enjoyed it. If you like guides, I do have plenty of them for War Tales. If you enjoyed what you've seen and took value out of it, I would appreciate if you leave a like and a comment uh, down below. That always helps to propel the videos and helps the channel. And it's a little bit of given, uh, given back. Thanks for watching. See you on the next guide and have a great day. Bye bye.